Hi all, welcome back to my channel. Hope you all are keeping safe. This time I've come with a target that how you can become a citizen developer with me. So this would be a course in which I will be covering a series of videos. And by the end of this video, you will become a citizen developer along with me. So let's get started with the first video of this particular course, which would be focused around introduction of RPA as well as what is citizen developer, who is citizen developer and how can you become one? So we all know what is RPA. It's robotics process automation that helps you automate your mundane task as well as intelligent task. And we know that RPA is non-invasive. It is very easy to scale and it is the future. So it's very important that if you are trying to start your career in RPA or you want to switch from any other particular career path of yours into RPA, this can be the first step because this absolutely requires no code knowledge, no programming background, it will be very easy for you to grasp and enter into RPA using this particular path. Then there are a lot of roles in RPA, as we all know, there are developers, which is kind of low code thing, but there are citizen developer, which is totally a no code thing. So it's very easy for you to learn citizen developer and become one by learning the course and the tool that is dedicated for it. Then we have solution architect, which is also requires coding background knowledge and also the architect knowledge. Then we have implementation manager. It's also kind of the same that you need to require, you need to have a little bit of coding knowledge. Then we have business analyst that is also on the business front with a no code knowledge. But if you want to have a little flavor of the code thing, then citizen developer is the thing. Then we have infrastructure engineer who looks after the infra stuff. And then we have the support engineer who also needs to have programming background knowledge so that he can fix the bugs being reported in the production. So we would be focusing over the second role, which is the citizen developer. We all know that there are a lot of job opportunities in RPA. And that is why I've come with this course that anybody who wants to start his career in RPA or who is planning to switch his career in RPA, this is the time and this is the cause. So as Gartner predicts that 90% of large, large organization globally will have adopted RPA in some form or the other by 2022. And also according to a report by McKinsey, there would be 140 million RPA jobs by 2025. So this is the time that you get into it, you learn RPA, you become citizen developer certified and you grab a job. So we would be focusing on UiPath tool to become the citizen developer and why UiPath? There are a number of reasons I can state that why we should be using UiPath to become one or to enter into RPA. It has been market leader for quite a long time now. It has a wide range of products as well as the forum support and the community support is gonna help you a lot during your automation journey. It provides free community license so that you can actually have a hands-on as well while learning, which means just not the theoretical knowledge, but also the practical knowledge where you can implement the stuff. Then it also provides certification by the course that are provided on Academy. And we have a lot of community events where you can take part, where you can bring up your queries, get it resolved, get a better picture about automation, what it is. So that is why this is the role of UiPath in RPA. And that is why I have specifically chosen a UiPath product for you to get certified, for you to become a citizen developer along with me. How to start learning RPA? The first is identify the tool, which we have already identified, which would be UiPath. But there's a specific tool named Studio X for UiPath. For the citizen developers, we would be seeing how to use it, how to install it and all that later in the video. Gather information resources about the tool. I'll be providing you all of that about the Studio X. Then you can identify some blogs, tutorials, some channels, some use cases which you can practice from where you can learn. You can download the free version, which is obviously there. If applicable is for other tools that do not provide the free version, but for UiPath, we have UiPath Community Edition, which is absolutely free for you to download, practice and learn. Then we have foundation level trainings also available on UiPath Academy, so you can go through it. And because we have the free version, we can get enhanced on experience, which is not true for a lot of RPA tools. 
Then you can acquire certification to validate your knowledge. It is very obvious that a lot of companies do ask for certifications for a particular tool, but UiPath also provides paid as well as free certification. So you can avail both. You can practice yourself and once you've mastered it, you can go for the paid and advanced level certification as well. It requires basic programming knowledge. That is when you go for RPA developer or solution architect. But when you go for citizen developer, you actually need not to have any programming knowledge. All the jobs would be done for you with the help of activities and all. We would be saying that later in the session. Then you can attend a lot of webinar and events so that you can have a broader vision, broader picture of what you're doing, what role you're playing in the automation journey of your organization. Moving forward. So now comes the main topic, who is a citizen developer? When we say that we would be becoming a citizen developer by the end of this course, then who are we actually becoming? What is that we are actually targeting to achieve? So robotics process automation we know is the process by which repetitive and mundane tasks can be automated and you would be doing it. A citizen developer would be doing it. So a citizen developer, you can be in any IT employee who creates application capabilities for consumption by themselves or others, which means when you actually work in your office, there are a lot of activities that you do on day-to-day -day basis, which is kind of repetitive, right? Like queries resolution or some HR activity that you're downloading the resumes and all, and then filtering it, or there could be support services that you know you have to reply to certain mails saying that, okay, your ticket has been registered and all. Then you're maintaining a lot of data and records from you getting the data from one CRM or other, storing it in Excel, sending it to someone else. So things like this that you're doing as part of your day-to-day -day activity in your office time can all be automated. So we have capabilities that can automate all such stuff. And all you have to do is just run the robot who's going to do the task for you. As well as you can also share that same thing with your colleagues. So if your colleagues are also doing the kind of same stuff that you are doing, they can also utilize the automation created by you to get their task completed faster and with less error rates. So this is what you would be doing as a citizen developer. You can actually identify the use cases that you can automate so that it saves you as well as your organization on a broader level, a lot of time. And you can actually put the time into more productive tasks. So to become a citizen developer, you need to have Studio X installed on your machine. And there is certain minimum requirements for you so that you can actually install Studio X on your machine. Studio X is a tool which you would be using as a citizen developer to automate the mundane task that you're performing. So minimum 4 GB RAM is required. And Studio X requests one of the following version of Microsoft Office. It can be 2010, 2013, 2016, 2019, or Office 365. So this is the minimum hardware and software requirements, which I guess we all must be having. So the requirements are also not very hard and fast that would not be available, or you would be struggling to get these requirements fulfilled. It's pretty basic. Then comes how to install Studio X. Okay, so to install Studio X, navigate to cloud.uipath.com. You'll get a screen like this. So you can either sign in with Google, Microsoft, LinkedIn, or you can enter your email to sign in. Once you sign in, you'll be able to see a page like this, which says UiPath Automation Cloud. On left-hand side, you can see design your workflows in UiPath Studio, where it says download Studio. You have to click on download Studio which will download an MSI file. So you'll have to simply install this file. You'll get a screen which asks you that you have a license key or you want to activate community license. Click on activate community license. Then you'll get an option which profile you want to choose. So on the profile option, you'll get Studio and Studio X. So out of the two, you have to select Studio X. If you already have installed and downloaded the UiPath Studio, like me, I already have the UiPath Studio. So this is Studio, but if I want to change my profile to Studio X, all that I have to do is I have to click on settings. Then I have to click on license and profile. Then I'll have to go on view or change profile. And this is the profile that I get. 
once you install UiPath Studio for the first time, then also you'll get a screen like this. And on the screen, you have to select UiPath Studio X. So this is for business users looking to automate tasks for themselves and their immediate team for users with limited or no experience writing code. So this is the USP of Studio X with limited or no experience writing code. So once you select it, it says profile was changed. Do you want to restart now? So you'll click on yes and it will load UiPath Studio X for you. So this you have already installed and you're ready with the tool, this UiPath Studio X, which is required for you to become a citizen developer. Now the other task is that we already talked about a lot of automations and a lot of things that we do in our day-to-day -day life. So we already talked about it. So those all things are required and those all things can be automated using UiPath Studio X. Now I'll quickly give you a walkthrough of the Studio X interface so that you're a bit aware of how to use, where to use and what lies where. So on this particular tab, the design tab, there are a lot of options that we see. Cut, copy, paste, we all know, save is whatever work you've done, you're gonna save it, undo, redo. Then we have project, which from wherein you can change your project settings. Okay, so you can change your name, you can give a description to your project, you can make it PIP ready. We'll talk about all this PIP, start in PIP later in the session in detail. Then we have notebook. So this actually is an Excel that you get with every project that you create in Studio X, but it would be more like wherein you can perform data manipulation, date manipulation, text, number, files, all of this can be performed using this particular project notebook that is provided with every project that you create in Studio X. Then you have manage packages from wherein you can install the packages for utilization. Then we have app and web recorder. So every step that we performed on desktop application or on web can be recorded and the code would be written by itself when you record those steps. Then we have table extraction that will extract the data present in the table format. It will extract it. Then we have analyze, which is going to check your project for any validation error that is there. Then we have export to Excel. That's going to export your entire automation that you've created in Excel. So in Excel, it would be returned in simple words what your automation is doing. Then we have publish, wherein we actually publish the code that we have created so that it, we can run it. Then we have re run button, which actually runs your project. So here are listed all the activities and resources which we would be consuming for building our Studio X project. So you can see it is categorized as app, web, some common activities, when you have to deal in with CSV automation, when you, you have to deal in with Excel, when you have to deal in with PowerPoint. So you can pick up activities from here and get started with your automation. Then we have properties pane for any activity that you pick in, you can actually set its properties and that you get here in the properties pane. Then we have data manager. In the data manager, we would find everything related to our solution. So anything that we are saving for later use or anything that we are consuming from outside, suppose we want to use our Excel in our application, in our solution. So that Excel has data that we have to use while we are automating. So that Excel would act as a data and can be accessed from here from data manager. Then we have output pins from where you can actually see what is the output of your process. So this is a high level overview, the interface of Studio X, how it reacts, okay? So in the next video, we would actually be building one small automation and deep diving into user interface automation, like anything that is related to UI, how are we going to automate it? And we would see a bit of web automation in the next video. So till then, stay tuned. Thanks for watching the video and please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel.